Defensive programming means designing your code to be robust to misuse. We want our systems to be able to handle bad data from users and from other systems. Sometimes people say garbage in, garbage out, meaning that if you put bad data into the system, it's allowed to misbehave, give garbage back, crash, go nuts, anything. Well-designed systems do not do that. Give the machine bad data and it should handle it gracefully. At a minimum, we can check for bad data. For any input, we should know something about what kinds of values are valid, and we can check against those specs. Sometimes, the checks we make depend on how we're going to use the data. For example, if we have string input that's going to be used to build some sort of command, we should be very careful that the resulting command doesn't do something unexpected. The classic example of this is SQL injection. XKCD has a classic comic for this. See the kid's name? If you put that in an SQL statement like this, it's a valid statement. But when we execute it, it has the terrible side effect of deleting a table. That can happen anytime you're building strings that you execute. We need a general strategy for where we're going to make the checks for invalid inputs. We certainly want to check data coming from a user. They are notorious for giving ridiculous input. If our system gets data from another system, we need to check that too. That could be a network computer that talks to us or external sensors that feed us data. Then within one system, there might be borders between different parts of the system where we should check things. For example, if we have a layered system, two layers might be built by different teams. So we might want to check the data coming from one layer to another. We could draw those kinds of lines wherever they make sense in our architecture. And you could take this to the extreme and check every parameter in every routine. That's probably overkill and would result in rechecking values as they get passed from one routine to another. So one of the early design decisions your team should make is where error checking should be done. One strategy for thinking about checks you need to make is called design by contract. With that strategy, we encode the error checking requirements into the code so that we're sure that they're checked at runtime. In this strategy, we specify three things. First, there are invariants, which are conditions that must always be true. Then, for every routine, we specify pre and post conditions. Preconditions are things that must be true at the start of the routine. These are often restrictions on arguments, but they can also be rules about the state of the system when the routine is called. Preconditions are the checks that defensive programming refers to. Postconditions are things that must be true at the end of the routine. These often encode the effect of the, the routine has on persistent variables like instance variables or global variables. For example, let's think about the push operations on a stack. Stacks have an invariant about where the top of stack pointer should be. For the push operation, its precondition might be the thing that we're pushing can't be null. In a non-object-oriented language, there might also be a precondition that the stack structure must have already been created. When the push operation finishes, its post condition is that the stack must be one bigger than it was when we started. We also might be able to say that the value at the top of the stack has the argument that we were passed. Design by contract says that the code will execute these conditions, so we need a strategy for how to do that. We can encode pre and post conditions using asserts. Most languages have some sort of assert capabilities. The idea behind an assert is that you put a condition in it, and when it executes, that condition is checked. If it's true, life goes on nicely. But if it's false, something might be logged and the system crashes. Sometimes we're allowed to attach a message that described what went wrong. That crashing thing sounds really bad. So most of the time, we can tell the compiler to ignore the asserts so that they don't go into our production code. That way, when we run the code in development mode, everything is checked carefully and we find the bugs. But production mode doesn't have that overhead and doesn't immediately crash when the condition isn't met. In C, you get asserts by including assert.h. It feels like it's a function that has an integer parameter, since C doesn't have native booleans. 
Zero means false, and that will make the assert crash the system. You can turn them off by defining nDebug before the include of assert h. If nDebug is defined, the definition of assert changes to make it do nothing, but your code will still compile it. In Java, assert is a statement that can have one or two operands. The first is the condition, and the second is an optional error message. If the condition is false, the assert will throw an exception. You could catch that exception if you want, but it's a runtime exception, so it doesn't need the throws clause in the method declaration. And if you don't catch it, it will cause your code to crash. Interestingly, we can turn them off, but that is done at runtime, not at compile time. The Java command that runs your code can have a clause to turn them on entirely, or one package at a time. This EA flag turns them on. By default, they're turned off. There are also design by contract frameworks that let you explicitly code invariants and pre and post conditions. This example is from Google's Contracts for Java package. It has annotations that let you specify invariants, preconditions, and post conditions. It also includes some keywords that help with encoding your conditions. For example, in a post condition, old means the value at the beginning of the method. So this ensures annotation is checking that the size of the stack has grown by one. If any of the requirements are not made, the code will throw an illegal state exception. There's also the capability to turn them on and off with a configuration file. Everything we've talked about in this video is detecting bad data. We haven't handled it gracefully at all. We've essentially crashed the system. There are times when that's the right thing to do but there are times when gracefully handling the error is the right thing to do. Some people say that the kinds of checks we're talking about and error handling are mutually exclusive, that we use the techniques from this video during development to find the defects in our code, but they are things that shouldn't happen in production code, so we should compile the asserts out of the production code. Alternatively, errors that can happen in production code should be handled gracefully. I agree with this philosophy. But other people say that if your code is complex, you should use both. For me, I think if you're saying that because you don't know what should or shouldn't happen in production, then you have a bigger problem. I think what they really mean is that we should crash in development. That makes sure that people fix things. But we should also be aware that production code isn't perfect. There may be situations where we want to crash in production too. That leads to the topic of error handling strategies. And I'll talk about that in my next video.